Okay, everybody, so here we are uh, to discover what we've done. See what we got with our backstrap layup. And um, I expect this went well. I love these kind of clamps. It just doesn't seem like more pressure is usually required for most things in instrument making. They're lightweight and reasonably cheap and configurable in a variety of ways. All right, so no surprises. Looks fine. First thing we'll do is we'll trim this edge. Uh, treble side of the headstock just so that we don't have a fragile piece of material sticking out there again you can see the amount of squeeze out is is uh, correct you know you want you want some you want a big mess I made a little mess up here but that's okay so now we're gonna get to work on this little overhang. So, as you can see, the ebony is carving very nicely with, of course, a freshly sharpened knife. And it's just giving us a beautiful surface. All right. So, we expect that that's about the place where the grain turns around. Of course it might not be, but we'll, <laughs> we'll find out. You know, the knife is such a big part of instrument making. Of course, the, really the first cutting tool, of course, is the knife. And people in the violin trade are using knives all the time and for some reason it doesn't seem to have leaked into guitar making and I, I really can't tell you why but I didn't really work with anybody that used the knife very much until I started making friends with some violin makers. I think I'm gonna go find a spoke shave. I'll be right back. So here's a spoke shave. There's a curved edge that we don't need right now, but nothing wrong with that. And of course this one has a curved bottom as well. Nice to have a light coming from the left side so I can see the size of the squeeze out and watch it get smaller.
and you'll see that <laughs> although the epoxy is essentially clear, it presents as white in the shaving because it gets broken and stressed. It's curving a little more here, so bottom of the spoke shape isn't helping. And move to a stiff scraper. All right, well, that's plenty for now. So we have uh, created an edge that is not fragile now. Uh, that was the point. So we don't have to watch out and worry about it while we're doing the rest of our work. And after we get the headstock veneer glued on, we'll have an easy time uh, cleaning up the rest of that little piece of material. might surprise some people <laughs> to see this as a, a choice of cutter and you know we could use a spoke shave again for this um, if the grain is going to cooperate which well, it seems like it is
The squeeze out is hard, of course, and um, it's filing nicely. It's kind of nice that it's it's there actually because it helps us evaluate how much material is left to remove. Nice little visual aid. Mm -hmm. Again, we don't have to get this perfect, but we're going to get close. And uh, I like to sand it when it's all, when all the parts are on, which means that, you know, if it gets a little shop worn or gets a scratch or something, it's not the end of the world. Don't want to sand this in advance of other gluing and machining operations. Okay, so this, that's what we want on this side. Everything's fine. Well, we could just take off this corner or J strip. Okay. So I just put an edge on this chisel and I put, oh, I don't know what it had before. I didn't really measure it, but I put a little bit more angle in it. So in other words, the sharpness angle is a little larger in number and is a thicker, steeper edge. And now we'll see how it's going to work in end grain ebony, obviously. A, challenging material, but clearly this chisel is up to the challenge. So a number of ways you can do this. You can start out like that if you want and sneak up on it this way. Obviously you got to be careful not to ding the neck, um, but that's why we're doing it now where we still have some extra material in the, the bottom of this. The throat or whatever it is, and uh, make sure we don't try and take off too much at once. But working really well. And just like the other side, we're going to, that is the, the treble side, and we were trimming down to the J. We're going to leave a little bit of extra material here. And it's a little bit easier to do the final cutting on this surface, which will, you know, when we're all done with it, have a layer of ebony veneer on each side. Could, could trim it down all the way now, but I think I'm going to leave just a little bit to go. 
All right, so that's about all I have. That's my little bit. And let's do a little saw cut here. Now I'll kind of explore this side of the part and see which way the ebony wants to split so I don't get in trouble here. So it's behaving pretty nicely. It seems like it's, it's quite straight with the part we're doing, although <laughs> you can be surprised. be said to be surprised so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna switch to the file file. All right, so that's pretty much what we wanted to get. You can see these little eruptions were um, places that uh, some friendly worms decided were good pathways through this ebony. So we're going to cut those off. There we go. Anyway, so, okay. Trimmed it, well, might as well trim this side too while we're here. Um, as some of you may remember, the base side of the headstock has some extra dimension that's relative to doing a good job installing the tuning pegs, making sure there isn't any um, um, problem with tear out as the cutter exits the slot in the side of the headstock. 
you know, you can, if you're curious about what I'm talking about, you can just have a look at the episode regarding the um, pantograph machine that I am using to um, cut the recesses for the Goto Stealth pegs. Okay, so again, the only real thing I need to do here is to just remove this fragile overhanging edge so that I don't hurt it by accident. Okay, so that's it. Backstrap is on and everything's looking good. Um, all right, so now next thing is fit the fingerboard and headstock veneer, clean off my blood and uh, glue it all together. <laughs> Yeah, that's old blood. Next time.